Let's talk about the difference between process and physics process and when to use which. Well, the process function runs every single frame. If your screen refreshes at 60 fps, it runs 60 times a second. At 240 fps, it runs 240 times. Pretty simple, right? Now, what about the physics process function though? Physics process is fixed at 6 physics ticks by default. It doesn't matter if you have a 240Hz monitor and more than 60 frames are rendered. The code inside physics process will always try to run at 60 times a second. This makes it super reliable for physics like collisions or gravity because it ensures everything happens at the same rate. This prevents physics related issues and bugs like a character slipping through the wall or falling through the floor of your game. All these issues might happen if we use the process function. And again, we need to always multiply by delta when writing movement code in physics process as well. This is because we can still experience a lag, so multiplying by delta avoids these issues and ensures consistent movement. I am implementing some sort of movement that happens every frame little by little. Should this movement be able to interact with other moving objects? For example, if I'm implementing my player character, should he be able to interact with rocks and grass in my level? Should he be able to collide with enemies or with walls? Should the engine handle all these collisions and ensure they do happen in a correct way without any bugs and issues? If your answer is yes, then use the physics process function always. If instead you don't really need any physics interaction, then feel free to use the process function instead. Let's go deeper into physics process for a bit. This physics stick property value can actually be changed from 60 to another custom value in the project settings inside the editor. Why would we want to change the physics tick property value though? You might want more ticks, like 120 for super precise physics in a complex game, like a racing sim with lots of collisions, or fewer ticks like 30 to save power on a phone. Okay, now that we know about the physics sticks property, how do we address the issue where better 240Hz monitors won't display the movement smoothly that we've placed in the physics process function? Since by default the physics stick rate is 60, should we change this value depending on the refresh rate of the monitor of the user? Should we inform the user of doing this himself once he downloads our game? Be warned, if you begin thinking that the physics stick rate property is for visual smoothness, you're completely wrong. The only reason you'd want to change this value is if you want better collision checks that run more often, or less collision checks if your game doesn't rely on that, which will save up some performance. So, the physics sticks value is purely for the physics behavior, not the monitor refresh rates. So, how do we solve the issue so that our physics related movement gets rendered smoothly? You see, the truth is that we worry about this way too early as beginners. But, since you're still watching this video, I'll tell you the way Godot solves this problem. Physics Interpolation There is an option inside the project settings that when enabled will fix that big issue. It will use the power of the physics process function to keep our physics calculations correct and it will also use the process function to render the textures smoothly by drawing in between frames where needed. Interpolation between frames Basically, with the option enabled, the game will draw our textures as smooth as possible and we don't have to worry about anything, unless we're targeting old and slow devices that might lag slightly due to more calculations being done in the background. A cool trick is that we can edit the physics stick property and lower the value to let's say 30 instead of 60 which will save on collision checks and improve our performance and yet the game will not look choppy or laggy. The game will always look smooth with physics interpolation enabled no matter the value of the physics sticks property. Why is this option not enabled by default? What are the downsides to physics interpolation? It uses more computer power. 
Drawing those extra frames takes away performance, so on a slow computer your game might lag a tiny bit. It can make things look too smooth, which might feel slightly off if your physics isn't perfect, like a character sliding a bit after landing. For some cases, you might need to call additional Godot specific functions in your script. If you don't write the extra logic, you will see visual glitches or bugs. One such example is trying to teleport your character. You have to inform Godot that you're doing that, otherwise it will draw extra in-between frames at that exact moment, which will make it appear as if your character glitched. One day, when you're coding custom solutions, you might not be able to rely on Godot's implementation. So, instead of just having to enable that option, you would have to implement your own custom solution. But, this is out of scope for our beginner series and it's still too early to worry about it. All the nodes that Godot has support physics interpolation by default, so you won't face any issues when making games, don't worry. Conclusion Now you are an expert at these two functions. Let's again just memorize this simple rule. Use process function for smooth animations that don't use the physics engine and don't need to interact with other things. Use the physics process function for nodes that do need to interact and collide with other nodes in the level. Use the physics interpolation option if you're targeting display screens above 60Hz and edit the physics stick weight value to fit your game needs to either get more physics collision checks for more accurate collisions or decrease it to get more performance for mobile devices if you don't have fast-moving objects that interact with each other. That was all for this tutorial. Make sure to like the video and leave a comment if you understood all these concepts.